Ninth race is the Durbridge Stakes, 12 after 7 here on TAB Trackside 1. Time to head back to Ellerslie. Alston Park, Aotearoa Classic. Boys get paid to 1.25 million outside of their not current live bets, but they've had another go and they've invested some of that into a multi $454,545. A multi at $5.40 on Legato and Orchestral to return 2.45 million. The biggest bet in New Zealand TAB history. Let's see what happens here. Big multi, huge multi. Let's take you on track, courtesy of Trackside Premier. Jeff, they run along here. Is he one of those back markers that can get in, in amongst it? That's what he'd be hoping for from his tricky barrier draw, but he was impressive last time out. The 11 is uh, Sterling for Matthew Cameron and Lauren Brennan. The last start, third in behind Carmen Lyon. It was improved the last start. Um, look, Kemp, Matt sort of uh, knows the horse as well, as well but um, meets a really strong field here today. Yeah, blinkers on. If you remember this horse last year, second start to the races as a maiden galloper, ran sixth in the El Men's Ordered, Sir Sterling. Number 12 is Legato. She's all class. It was a quality return, wasn't it? Effortless. Look, Kim Kelso and Bev, uh, we know how good they train these fillies. Um, look, she had a bit of improvement on her last year, and uh, look, if she gets luck in the running, I can't really see her getting beat. Look, she had to carry more weight than her rivals last start, and she still won. This time, it's set weight conditions. She carries less weight, increases to 1,600 metres. That's her pet distance. Wow, we, how do they beat her? The 13 is Wessex, and Leith looks like the likely pacemaker in the race. She does. Uh, last year in the three-odd race, she led it by quite a margin as well. Um, she hasn't quite found that form this season, so uh, look, she's going to be in front for a long time, but not for me today. Yep, she sets up the genuine speed in the race, does Wessex. So let's move along with the uh, preview of the Elston Park Aotearoa Classic over the mile. And I guess with Legato, you mentioned it in the yard here. It is all about luck and running. Where do we see her getting to in running from the draw? Look, I think she's a perfect draw in seven, Emily. Uh, look, when she has been a lucky last season when she was in the three-year-old race, she was in barrier one. Um, you could get anyone who's never seen a racehorse and pick out the best horse in this field and they're going to just point to the number 12. <laughs> she's an amazing looking horse, they only paid 90000 for her and she's a beast. Look, I think the, the barrier draw is actually it works into her favour. As you said, they didn't want inside draw, they don't have that. But Ryan just has good options, just needs to blend into the race at the right time, give her the, the space that she needs and, and really just let, let her let down. I mean, she's a two-time Group 1 winner. Her best performance was when she was absolute first class in the Australian Guineas. She brings anywhere near that form, and she might tonight. Uh, I'm not too sure how they're going to hold her out. Well, let's get to you, Wade, and you're standing by with international reader David Eustace. And David, uh, obviously Hong Kong on the horizon. This means that this is one of your last runners in partnership with with, uh, with Kieran. So, well, that, that must be uh, a funny feeling. Yeah, it is. It's been um, a strange week, you know, see um, seven, eight years with Kieran and uh, a lot of a lot of great memories and wins and, and uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, been a bit odd the last few days knowing that it's all going to wind up and hopefully we can end with a bang. Yeah, was the Melbourne Cup the highlight or is there another one that stands out? Oh, definitely was. You know, it's it's what everyone's trying to win. It's the pinnacle, isn't it, of our sport? So um, yeah, it was a great day. Okay, let's talk about Holy Man's. We've seen the horse, lovely horse uh, for starters. Has he come over after that Coastal Classic win? Travelled great. Um, he's stayed with Lance and. Uh, they've all been very kind, obviously, out Cambridge stud, and Anna's been very pleased with him. He worked nicely Monday morning, and he hasn't missed a beat. He's got a great attitude. Um, he'll go forward. Um, hopefully, we can sort of nestle in the first half dozen, and uh, he'll like the quick ground. And um, look, obviously, Legato's the one to beat, isn't she? But uh, hopefully, he can uh, knock her off. It's a bit of a new challenge, sort of assessing that form, but. Uh, outside Legato and obviously you've raced against Legato, uh, where do you think you can sit? Look, I, I think he, he'll measure up, um, as you say it is hard to sort of line them up but he's still improving and uh, his win the other day was, was, was a good impressive win and he you know, is only going to improve off that um, having had a sort of shortish break so um, yeah, I, I think he'll be in the mix. Okay, it'll be nice to go out with a bang, best of luck with it. It would, thanks. Great insight from David Eustace with regards to Holy Man's in our next the Elston Park Aotearoa Classic. We'll get to you, Guy, and you're joined by a sportsman but a racing fan in Israel Dag. 
Yeah, a very, very big racing fan indeed. Uh, is he great to see you? How, how are you going today? Are you winning? I'm a fan, but I'm a horrible uh, tipster and punter. But look, look I've, yeah, gone all right. I had Malacious and J-Mac in the last, which is a good start. I've just got uh, Legato in the next, so hopefully uh, that one gets us paid. And Look, it's been a great day. It's great to be back at Ellerslie Raceway. It's gone for its renovations, the public's out, just uh, Auckland weather. You know, not surprised at all, really, but um, we're having fun. I think you're about to go two for two, by the way. Um, how much are you into racing these days? Like, it's, it's just built up over the last few years for you, hasn't it? Absolutely love it, and being on the radio airways, getting a, you know, a lot of good relationship with a lot of the punters, a lot of my friends. My dad's a tragic punter, so I had to watch it throughout my younger years. Um, absolutely love it, mate. I, I owned a horse last year, we just sold it. Looking to get into it a bit more, and then with Entain coming on with SCNZ, well, it's a no-brainer that I should get my uh, get pick my act up on the horse racing game. So I'm just showing my true colours here. Hopefully, I can pick a few more winners. Well, hopefully, you can indeed. Go and enjoy it, mate. Thanks, guy. Yeah, best of luck to uh, Izzy Dag with his investments throughout uh, this evening. Just a couple to go before the after party starts. Thad will come to you. Breaking news with regards to the boys get paid. They've had the biggest bet in New Zealand history here. It's a double, Legato into Orchestral. So Legato there at a dollar, it was a dollar forty, I think dollar fifty into Orchestral to return two point four million dollars. So that's a bet to win of two million dollars. So that pool sit, currently sits at around eight hundred thousand for them. They're obviously cheering Legato, and that would all finish on James McDonald and Orchestral uh, in the last race of the day. The three Karaka million three-year-old. Look, it was a decent push for Sharp and Smart here, guys. Got all the way into $9. It's just started to trickle out again. So that push is gone. And the push now is actually for Legato. Uh, the $1.35 that was around about five or so minutes ago has gone. That's into a $1.30. And look, almost back to the exclusion of all others. Holy Man's been very easy. $8.50 out to $16. Desert Lightning holding around 12 but can't see it starting any shorter. So... It's all about one horse here. It's all about one horse here in this room with me, Emily, up BGP room, and her name is Legato. Yeah, a lot riding on Legato in our next. Brittany Taylor, you've got the perfect view of the Queen herself. She's a beautiful type, isn't she? She's an absolute specimen. I'm an unabashed fan of Imperatries, one of your wonderful mares, and having seen her over the uh, Australian Spring Carnival, but I think Legato might be rivaling for my favourite New Zealand mare because she is an absolute stunner, and Ryan Elliott's been really quick to bring her to the gates. The others are still completing their preliminaries, but he's bought her here and given her to a barrier attendant just to lead uh, her around and, and keep her nice and quiet and she is doing just that. She has those red earmuffs on, they'll come off before the start but she's being nice and relaxed. Aiden, we'll come to you. You're joined by Sarah Green who of course uh, involved in the ownership with the two Desert Lightning. Yeah, we've grabbed uh, Sarah. Sarah, well, this must be exciting because the exhibition gallop says that Desert Lightning's going really well. What's your take on them? Well, Peter's really happy with the way that he did his exhibition gallop. And, of course, his last start was a group one, but anything can happen. Every horse in this race is a brilliant horse and deserves their place, but Ernie deserves his place too. He sure does. Uh, we come up here and, and get amongst it and... Boy, isn't there an atmosphere here? It, it must be amazing yeah. to be back. It's really fun to be back. We've got 46 people with us. Most of them have flown up from the south, um, and also we've got obviously the Netherlands group. So you know everybody's going to be cheering. Whatever happens, I'm so proud of them. Yeah, best of luck too. And of course, uh, you bred orchestral in the last, so you got a, yes. another chance too. So we've got the full brother for sale on Tuesday, and we also um, have a, a fall on the ground of Philly, the full sister. But I think she's going to stay with me. Best of luck, Sarah. Okay, thank you. Well, great to hear from uh, Sarah Green. If you're Ryan Elliott right now, Lee, how are you feeling? You've got a short price favourite in a feature race. Well, he knows he's got one job. He's just got to stay out of trouble. Um, she's quite clearly the uh, best horse in the field, but Ryan's a big-time jockey, and uh, he's had this pressure before, and I think he'll be fine. Yeah, that's exactly it. He's just got to make sure he keeps her in the clear and, and, and gives her the best opportunity to win the race. Look at that, Emily. Boys get paid about $104,166.67 on Desert Lightning in the Legato out market at $4.80. And that grandstand will be rocking if either of these bets can get home. Legato's a win. Desert Lightning's a win. It's all go for the boys get paid. They're going to keep up the momentum uh, this evening for the Elston Park Aotearoa Classic. We've seen a number of famous faces in in the crowd uh, this afternoon and there is one of those George Simon uh, we're getting through these feature races as we come to you for the next yeah, it's a real who's who of 
New Zealand society. Some big timers here today. And uh, while well, talking about big timers, in many people's eyes, she's the best horse in New Zealand at the moment, and that is Leganto, whom I referred to, and she is the dominant favourite here. For the inaugural running of the Alston Park Aotearoa Classic, $1 million for the four-year-olds. She dominates the betting. She was so impressive when winning here just two weeks ago on the first day back at Ellerslie. So she'll be one of the last three to come in. Legato, Channel Surfer about to come up. And RB to come into line as well. The steady rain falling. But the crowd's staying. They're not going anywhere. We've got two more to go. This is Legato. She goes forward. And now RB will be the last one in. Sam Weatherly, Clothier family. So stand by for the start. Inaugural running of the Alston Park Aotearoa Classic. A tenant moves away from in front. Tony McGovern on a stand. We are set. Ready. Let's bring it on. They're off for the million dollar race. She jumped first of all, Legato. She's in the early lead now, but there's Rudyard going forward, as is Sacred Satono and Wessex, who many anticipated would lead, is eventually going forward now. Being tracked across by Desert Lightning. She's right in the early party as Legato. She's going to settle down fifth. A length away, Holy Mans, and then came Wild Knight from Sharp and Smart, Sue Sterling. Back in the field is Accidental Tourist, followed by Cognito. Two lengths away, Channel Surfer and RB. They work up on top of the rise towards the thousand meters and away goes Wessex as she is wont to do she leads by five lengths here in second spot is Desert Lightning the group one winner at his last start two and a half away then third is Rudyard followed on the inside by Satono uh, Sacred Satono uh, then followed round by Holy Mans Legato's back sixth and eight off this leader further back in the field is Wild Knight tracking Legato through then sharp and smart the derby winner from Sir Sterling Cognito accidental tourist RB and last of all is Channel Sir Nine links over the field as they come towards her home turn. 500 metres to go. Wessex the leader. She Desert Lightning travels well and he's taken over and got away by three. Where's Legato? She's angling for a run. She's four links off this leader. Desert Lightning. And behind them Holy Mans and then followed by Sacred Satono. It's Desert Lightning giving a great sight. Legato has to call on all her qualities. I don't think she'll get there. Desert Lightning's got them in all sorts. Legato second from in third spot is Rudyard. But Desert Lightning... He is brilliant. Desert Lightning ran them into the deck. Legato second, third over was uh, Rudyard. And then we had RB finishing on strongly. And right with it also sharp and smart. Holy Mans and Wessex. And behind them then Sir Sterling followed over by uh, back in the field. Then was Channel Surfer followed by Accidental Tourist Cognito, Sacred Satono and Wild Knight. Vinnie Colgan. Peter and Dawn Williams from Bali Park get the win in the Alston Park Aotearoa Classic on top of the Group 1 win at his last start. She had her opportunity to hunt him down, but she, he had them in all sorts. A fair way from home, Desert Lightning. For Barnswood Farm Limited, SC Green and GC Bimsterboa, and she, he has been dominant. Desert Lightning will win it. Second over will be Legato, and they were clear of the opposition. Rudyard was there as well, but no doubt about the winner here, Desert Lightning. He is flying. He's just run them into the ground, Desert Lightning. He's jumped, he sat off Wessex, and he has run them along at a clip. Legato's tried. She's got out when she needed to, but she just couldn't peg back the Group 1 winner. Yeah, good positive ride by Vinny. Um, look, this horse is just confidence. He's, uh, his racing manners have improved since last season, and uh, look, he wasn't by, far behind those better horses last season either. Look, he wasn't. For Prowess and, and Wild Knight with those horses in front of him in the three-year-old edition. He came here with confidence at the Group 1 level in the TAB Classic, and a confident jockey as well in Vincent Colgan, and he got Got the break on Legato at the right time, and that was the winning break. Yeah, he certainly did. He got his timing to perfection. Well, obviously, Wessex was going hard up front, but to full credit to Vinny. Yeah, full credit to Vinny is right. Brittany, we'll get to you. Second time today, you've got to catch up with Vinny Colgan. Oh, Vinny, describe this moment all week. They were saying nothing could beat Legato. What were your thoughts coming into the race? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> a bit premature, really. Uh, this horse is a very good horse. 
Uh, and his TAB Classic win was outstanding. I know he hasn't run for seven, eight weeks, but I had a gallop on him two weeks ago, and I knew Pete had him peachy perfect. Describe the, your run in the home straight, because you were just saying you could hear the call. Oh, absolutely. Uh, when I heard George say, I got him in trouble, I put kind of a smile on my face, so uh, made it a bit easier. But you can never be confident when you know you've got a good mare behind you. Well, exactly. I sort of loafed the last 200 metres and he sort of felt like he was waiting for something to help him to the line. Um, look, if she had it. Yeah, no. Not today. She wouldn't have got me today. No way. No, you were too good. Congratulations. Well done. There's Vinnie Colgan and the man who's uh, behind it, uh, behind uh, with the wife Dawn is Peter Williams. Peter, that is a, a performance straight from the top draw. Your reaction to it? Oh, look, it was a great card. He's done everything right going into the race. Um, he's really grown a leg this year. Um, we, we hadn't had any problems with last year, we knew, but we couldn't do anything about it until otherwise he'd have missed all those good races. So, um, we, And we turned him out for a good spell. And that's been the makers of him. He's come back in super form with a Group 1 and now a million dollar race. And you've lowered the colours of Legato again. Uh, that must be pretty satisfying. Well, you know, a lot of people don't... Re well, I suppose they do, but they don't pay. You know, he beat Legato, he beat Ponies as a three-year-old. And But no one ever gives him any credit. And yet I've always rated him as a top horse. And Vinny has too. Yeah. When we saw Crochetti come out and win earlier on and, and you had... Basically, he's travelled beautifully right alongside that horse in that he, exhibition gallery. He went better than Crescetti, yeah. and I mean, you can see it on TV. I mean, Benny just came in and he said, don't you do anything, <laughs> any, anything else. And because uh, I thought about going to uh, counties for a trial the other day, but when he ran home in 32, I thought, he don't need another trial, he, another gallop. He just, we'll just keep him home and potter away with him. And, and it's, it's, everybody's done a great job. These two wins have both been at 1,600 metres. Do you leave him at that distance or do you get